So, uh, uh, so um, B on uh, Okay. So I would like to uh, introduce. I would like to thank Dr. Ranawat, the course chairman, and Mr. Les Jacobs, the course organizer, for inviting us here. We are a emerging company. Uh, pursuing a new approach for knee replacement with entirely patient-specific, minimally invasive knee implants. The company achieved uh, some recognition in 2009. We received a medical design in excellence a gold award uh, that was for our patient-specific IUNI implant. I want to show you the background for this implant here today. And then Dr. Uh, Anil and Amar Ranawat will talk in detail about the surgical technique and the clinical benefits of this new technology. Our company was founded in 2004. We have today a little over 100 employees, 275 patents, key patents on patient-specific technology related to implants and instrumentation have issued. And our mission is to develop novel, proprietary, and highly differentiated, minimally invasive uh, orthopedic implants for the treatment of patients with early, moderate, and also late-stage arthritis. The scientific advisory board includes Dr. Thomas Thornhill, uh, designer of the PUC Sigma system, together with Dr. Richard Scott, uh, the cruciate retaining. We have uh, Dr. Tom Minus, director of the Harvard Cartilage Repair Center, Dr. Fitz at Harvard, Dr. Brian McKeon at Tufts University, is a team physician for the Boston Celtics, and Drs. Anil and Amar Ranawat are on the surgical design team for the total knee system uh, that will be introduced in 2010, this year. I want to talk primarily about our current product offering, the partial knee resurfacing the IUNI and the IDUO. The basic premise with this technology is um, in many patients, knee replacement is delayed, is postponed until a later age because of the invasive uh, nature of the procedure and also the potential for the need for revision surgery in the future. Um, there are a number of studies, including most recently data from the NIH Osteoarthritis Initiative that show that up to 35 to 50 percent of patients uh, have in the general population with OA have in fact unicompartmental or bicompartmental disease and are potential candidates for partial knee replacement rather than total knee. And obviously total knee is a procedure that requires extensive instrumentation and I want to talk briefly about our approach there also. You will hear a lot more about the specific benefits of the implants by Dr. Anil and Dr. Amar Ranawat. In principle, what we try to do is listen to our surgeons and address the key uh, design shortfalls of current unicompartmental devices. Example, uh, typical unicompartmental tibial designs cannot completely cover the tibial plateau. Um, they're either too short or the ML dimension is not properly matched uh, to the joint. Uh, with the patient-specific approach, you have all around 100% cortical bone support. So the performance with regard to tibial subsidence, as we see now in biomechanical studies, is significantly improved. Other concern with partial knee replacement systems, unicompartmental systems, is patellofemoral disease. We can address this by also resurfacing the patellofemoral joint and there's no more overhang or underhang. The implants match exactly to the condylar geometry and the tibial geometry. We don't stop with simply matching the anatomy. More important, the objective is to restore normal kinematics. So the implants are designed to restore normal femoral geometry, correcting for arthritic deformity, correcting on the bearing surface for femoral flattening, for potholes, for osteophytes, etc., and reestablishing a patient-specific bearing geometry that through that helps restore normal kinematics. We restore rather than raise the joint line with this approach and be with the functional knee systems, we use the ACL and PCL. 
There's no intraoperative sizing, there are fewer bone cuts, fewer trials, and the implants are completely patient-specific and 100% patient-disposable. We've recently released um, our second generation of the IUNI implant, and the approach that this implant takes is that on the undersurface of the femoral component, the implant is exactly matched to the patient's subchondral bone. Each implant patient individualized, 100%. The external surface is corrected for arthritic deformity, and you are reestablishing a normal patient-specific sagittal J-curve. The benefit of that is that the issue of mismatch of, the, of a fixed implant geometry with a standard device relative to the patient's anatomy and a resultant flexion or extension gap is greatly minimized because you're having a so much more anatomic approach. Now, with regard to the coronal geometry, the software measures in each patient across the condyle the change in coronal geometry and then derives a mean coronal curvature. Subsequent to that, the coronal curvature patient derived is kept constant. So you have a fixed constant coronal curvature and this is paired with a femur-matched tibial design, one to five ratio, uh, with a curved polyethylene. And when you look at the contact stress, for example, with this patient-specific design, so patient-specific sagittal geometry, patient-derived constant coronal geometry, you can see that we are achieving contact stress that's comparable if not even a little better than some of the comparable devices. We've also introduced an interference lock for reducing micromotion uh, that places this implant at the top operatively. It shows you the placement of the patient-specific pre-navigated femoral jig, ultimately the placement of the implant. You see the tibial osteophytes that need to be removed for the resurfacing approach. You can see here the tibial slope that's in the system. The system replicates the patient's normal tibial slope. Unless the slope is greater than seven degrees, then the slope is fixed at seven. So you're not only replicating a normal sagittal femoral J-curve, you also have a patient-specific slope here. And you can see here uh, the tibial cutting jig that you use to place the uh, horizontal and the vertical tibial cut is attached to a balancing chip. You have four balancing chips of different thickness that drive the jig as you balance to flexion and extension superiorly or inferiorly. So what you have is a fully patient-specific implant paired with a fully patient-specific cutting jig paired with a traditional ligament balancing technique in flexion and extension using a patient-specific balancing chip. So the promise is for patients, less invasive surgery, potential for faster recovery, a personalized implant that provides superior fit. It is a very bone-preserving approach. As such, you preserve all options for future surgery. The surgeons in the United States like the concept of having now the ability, in fact, also to treat younger patients who present with arthritis. They like the precise, pre-navigated instrumentation uh, and the simplified surgical technique. Now, as you introduce this technology into your OR, you will also notice that, in fact, your OR staff uh, are going to like this. The implant comes shipped in a single uh, plastic set. You have here the, an insert for the implant that is implanted into the patient, and on the other side, the disposable instrumentation. You can imagine the setup with this technique. This is all it takes, basically a small table with the disposable instrumentation. The setup is a matter of one or two minutes, the surgical time is reduced. On average, what we're seeing in our trials, approximately 25 minutes compared to standard traditional systems. And when you're actually done with the surgery, since everything is disposable, the nurse will essentially wrap the materials into the sterile drape and dispose it in, into the biohazard waste. So the tear is also significantly faster with this approach. These are examples of the economic benefits. Um, these are U.S. numbers. Um, I'm not sufficiently familiar with the Indian market to, to know how this would reflect here, but it will give you a general idea what some of the benefits are. So there is a cost savings in sterilization 
because the instrumentation is being provided sterile and once done it is disposable, you dispose of it. Um, there is a reduction in OR time that results in a cost savings. We see typically on the uh, a one day in reduction in length of stay. There are other benefits in the U.S. that um, there is incremental benefit from the charges for this scan. And uh, many of our surgeons, in fact, also like having this patient-specific concept. It attracts a lot of patients, and many of those, in turn, may, in the end, uh, end, uh, end up having a total knee system if they have tricompartmental disease. Now, that brings me to tricompartmental disease. We're not stopping here. The total knee system is coming. Uh, on the surgical design team are Dr. Anil and Dr. Amar Ranawat. I'm not in a position here yet to describe, uh, provide you with a lot of design features of the implant, but I want to briefly describe some of the benefits that we can achieve in a total knee system with a 100% uh, patient-specific approach. What we see is significantly greater bone on the order of 40% less bone, resec bone resection than a standard total knee system. The system is designed to be pre-primary. In other words, you're taking off so little bone that when the day comes for a revision surgery, you can revise this to a standard primary total knee. The concept being we want to save the patient from ever having uh, uh, needing the uh, revision surgery uh, with the revision implant. The implant has a patient-specific sagittal J-curve, and through this we can see near-normal kinematics. So in cadaveric testing, for example, there's no mid-flexion instability and there's completely normal femoral rollback. The surgical technique is greatly simplified with the use of patient-specific cutting jigs. And last but not least, we have patient-specific intraoperative balancing with the balancing chip technology that I mentioned briefly. So what is Conformus all about? Standard off-the-shelf implant can suffer from overhang and resultant pain, underhang with the potential for stipular subsidence. And in particular in this country, how many times do you see that you have, for example, a very petite woman and with the standard sizes that you have available, you have difficulty properly fitting that implant. With a patient-specific approach, conformist implants fit every patient, every man, every woman, every single time, because it's 100% patient-specific. Not only the jigs, also the implants. And through the patient-specific approach, you get patient-specific kinematics. A normal healthy knee will typically bend 140 to 160 degrees. Uh, we heard a lot earlier about high-flexion knees. So again, traditional off-the-shelf knee implants offer 100 to 100, typically 100 to 120 degrees flexion. And there's clearly some controversy about the high-flexion knees. What we see here, we offer the only uh, knee implant system that provides patient-specific kinematics and through that ultimately a full range of motion while in fact preserving most of the bone around the knee. It is much more bone preserving. And this translates ultimately into greatly improved daily activities like normal bending, squatting, kneeling, sitting cross-legged. And uh, with this brief introduction, uh, I want to hand it over to the experts, uh, to Dr. Anil and Dr. Amar Ranavat. Thank you. talk a little bit about how um, you go about doing a, a knee uh, with the company. Uh, the company right now, uh, as we mentioned, has uh, several devices. The iUni, or the Uni Compartmental Knee, is probably their most uh, successful device so far. Uh, and as we mentioned, we're working on a, a total knee. Uh, but it, all of these designs provide the same patient-specific uh, uh, technology, which we'll go over uh, right now. The basic process for overview uh, starts with a CT scan. You get a 3D image, which is processed. They design the implant for you, as well as the disposable jig, and it's all delivered. And it takes about six weeks, as we mentioned before. Once they get the CT scan, they can make a three-dimensional model. And this model uh, allows us to accurately figure out where we're going to put our tibial uh, component. As you can see, as you talked about before, it's kissing the ACL on the spine. It will also match the surface topography of the 
tibial cut surface so that when we put in the spacer uh, balancing chips that will fit in perfectly and that allows us to get the exact alignment correction uh, that we want and it can establish that in all planes. Once again it allows us to reproduce the posterior slope to the patient's anatomy and this allows uh, reproduction of the patient's kinematics. On the femoral side, the design uh, is taken from the three-dimensional model. It is perfectly contoured and it's balanced in the, uh, in the back. Once we map the design for the implant, the jig is created to make the posterior cuts and the lug for the uh, implant. These fixation pegs allow us to have perfect fit and fixation, it's angled to prevent uh, loosening. And once again, this patient-specific curve is uh, designed to allow restoration of the kinematics for the patient. And now my brother is going to go over the uh, surgical technique, technique steps one by one. By one.